Hello and welcome to the studio and some very experimental films where I am going to try and combine Moccolito printing, which is a type of lithography on wood which originated in Japan, with Mokuhanga printing, which is traditional Japanese woodblock printing using watercolours. So um, this is a Moccolito block. And I am going to be honest with you, it is one of the very few blocks that I have prepared and printed from. I am no expert in this. So this is very much me learning as I go along. I have done a course with the excellent East London printmakers, with expert printmaker Caroline Whitehead, and I'm going to put a link to them in the description. So I really recommend uh, taking a course on this, but you are welcome to join me as I try and make this work. So this is a piece of um, plywood that I've got here, and I have my um, print painted on it. So like stone lithography, Moccolito um, works on the basis that the ink clings to an oily substance on the block and where there isn't any oil, the ink will wash away. So I'm going to go into that further late in later episodes and explain how that works a little bit. But the result is very, very seductive. So here I have the print from this block and you can see what gorgeous textures I'm getting there. And that got me really excited for my process because I'm always very fascinated by texture and the potential for mixing this in with Japanese woodblock printing. So here I have a Japanese woodblock print and this particular print, and I'm just going to slip this piece of wood underneath it so you can see it a little bit better. That's better. And Japanese woodblock printing is a lovely watercolour method. It's quite subtle. It can be quite precise. And I just like the idea of marrying the two. But with this, there is the question of how you marry a an oil-based process that's done on an etching press with a water-based process that is done by hand and get them to work together. So that's going to be fun. And to start that, I thought either I can do a whole load of little test plates that are just little squares or something and see if this works, or I can just make a picture. So I thought it would be more fun to actually make a proper print. And I picked an amazing bit of landscape. You're going to love this drawing. It's, it's really classy. Um, here we go. And I picked a landscape up in Cumbria called Wastwater. And it's it's quite a spectacular and quite bleak uh, part of the Lake District with kind of purpley grey mountains. And I just thought it'd be perfect. So I this is this is me thumbnailing, working out where I'm going to go with my design. So early days. Um, but I'm going to work this up into a proper drawing. So by the magic of editing, I am here with my finished drawing of Wastwater. And my plan is to have all of this bit here, Mokolito, with lots of texture and vibrancy, and then to have the foreground in Japanese woodblock, probably with a little bit of Mokolito. Mokolito, that sounds like a drink, doesn't it? Mokolito uh, in the foreground as well. So the first thing I need to do is to get the registration worked out. And for that, I'm going to use the Japanese woodblock technique of uh, kentos. So a kento, just grab this to show you, is basically a pair of little shelves um, that is cut into the wood at the same time as the woodblock is cut. So here with my little apple, I've cut myself a pair of shelves that are going to hold the printing plate paper in place. So these Kento, um, this cut here tells me how far my printing paper needs to go across and the two 
cuts here hold the printing paper at the right level. So I need to cut these little shelves accurately. And with Japanese woodblock, the way that I do that is to make a master tracing. And you'll notice that with my drawing here, I've got a margin. And I have drawn a two centimetre margin around the print. And I am going to use that to position my tracing paper. Now, I go into a lot more detail about the Japanese woodblock technique in other videos. So if you look at my playlists, you will find other helpful videos on that. So I'm not going to take a lot of time to show you it. So what I've done here is to position my tracing paper, not on the print, but on the border. And I have taken a tracing of my image. Sorry, let me go up a bit. There we go taken a tracing of my image ready for me to transfer. So at the moment, what I've got is everything going on on the left hand side of the print. And that's because when I reverse it, my little shelves are going to be corner here on the right hand side when I mark my registration. So I've now reversed my print so that it will the uh, reverse the tracing so that the finished print will come out in the same orientation as my drawing. So I'm just going to show you uh, a little bit of transfer onto my woodblock for the Japanese woodblock part of the process and we'll deal with the Mokolito in another film. So just to wrap this episode up, I'm going to transfer this foreground onto a piece of ply to cut out to make a Japanese woodblock. So this is a piece of Sheena plywood here, and you'll notice that it's already seen some action. It has a block here that I'm already using. And actually, on the other side, there's even more um, blocks cut. But I have a nice bit here and I can fit my foreground here and my registration into this space. So all I need to do is to grab myself some masking tape and tape this down. nice and secure. And then I'm going to get myself some carbon paper. So this is uh, just office carbon paper. So it's the sort of um, paper you would, carbon paper you would use for documents, something like that. And I'm going to pop that under my tracing. So that I can trace out this foreground part of the um, wood block. And before I do that, I want to mark where my little registration slots go. So for that, I'm going to need a pencil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pencil and just run it along the tracing paper. So I'm just going to run it down the side of the tracing paper to give myself a guide and I'm also going to use it as a guide to put a mark about three quarters of the way along the bottom of the print. So those two marks there will show me where to cut my kentos. But I should mention at this point that there are also things called stick-on kentos. Um, these I got from hand printed and I'll put a link down in the uh, description and you can just stick these on as well. And this is what I'm going to use when I get to the Mokolito part of the procedure. But for now, I'm just gonna mark these in place and then all I have to do is settle down and map out my tracing here. So I've switched to a nice sharp hard pencil and I'm going to map this out and it's really important if you are mapping out a tracing like this just to take your time and be nice and accurate. Now the other important thing is that once you've marked the registration 
don't move the tracing paper or you're going to lose the registration. This tracing paper is plastic. It is a product uh, po called Polydraw that I talk about from time to time. And it's really important when you are doing a tracing based transfer where you need to use the tracing repeatedly, as I will, in order to map out both my Japanese wood blocks and my Mokolito blocks, um, that the tracing paper stays stable. Now, if you use paper-based tracing paper, it can cockle. I mean, I'm really bad. This, somehow I immediately get wet stuff on it. I don't know how I manage that, but I do. Um, but also if it's very damp, the, pa the paper-based tracing paper can start to cockle as well and distort. And then, of course, it makes it really hard to get everything to line up. So this polydraw film, because it's plastic, it's completely stable. And I have, in fact, dropped a whole cup of tea on a tracing and just wiped it off and it was fine. So if you are a complete klutz like that, like me, um, it's great stuff. So I am going to carry on with this tracing and I hope you'll be joining me for more films in this series as I work on getting the tracings mapped out and getting my Mokolito blocks ready. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I hope I'll see you again soon.